Um, my name is Vasily Elitvaraya. Uh, those on top of my social network handles. That's a meetup I organize. You might have guessed. Uh, CPWA. You've heard of it. Who had heard of CPWA? Okay. <laughs> Just like on all the other meetups, like five hands on them. FlexFX is a company I'm working with delivering money overseas but using blockchain. Um, yeah, that's why it's fast and cheap. <coughs> um, so, so, let's start from some history on how all these um, biometrics came from. Because it's actually a longer story than you might have thought. About in 2016, Google launched they have a proposed, they proposed a standard called a Web Credentials API. Basically, it's a login and password storage within browser. Nothing else. Like two vendors, login and password. And uh, there were literally two more APIs. One to store the login and the password. And another one is to bring up this dialogue and user just selects whom he would like to log in as. So um, that was the adoption. Basically, only one browser implemented it. Nobody else. Uh, and there are a few reasons to it. I'm not going to dive into it. But it then, yeah, it was actually a failure. Because uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's deprecated or not. It's in kind of in, in a known state. But based on this standard, they develop a new standard. And actually all of that, to came up with the, finally the biometrics, it took five years to consolidate all the browsers, all the <coughs> experts and stuff. So welcome the uh, Web Authentication API. As you can see, browser support is quite great. Uh, Safari is the new IE, as you know. So that's why it doesn't have all the features. Um, but as you can see, um, it kind of exists behind the flag, but only support behind the flag. It supports only thumb drive and uh, authentications, not, not the biometrics yet. And on iOS, Safari is, is unknown, I don't know when it comes. So people think it might come this year, but no, in Apple it might come next year. But it's coming. Because uh, all major browsers already implemented it. And Samsung is committed to implement it as well. Um, so, this is an abstract from a specification abstract. Abstract of abstract. So, Web Authentication API is API for one or more public keys for ensuring that no operation is performed without user consent. Well, it's basically a public key storage, a public plus private key storage. So your fingerprint scanner or any other biometrics be issuing public and private keys. Well, it doesn't issue private, it stores the private inside of it, but uh, the public is, is given to you as a, as a developer. You can read it if you want. Uh, it's interesting information. I'll wait. Um, Ruin Party is Nothing else but your website. Your website. And um, moving on. Quick reminder what is private and public key, because uh, I know everybody is smart, but I learned this last year. Um, so, uh, if you have a public key, well, somebody issues a public key and a private key then somebody else can use public key to verify that the message is like correct. It, it, somebody signs it with a private key and then 
you were using the public key, but just make sure that it wasn't modified by anybody in the middle. And another uh, usage, you can actually encrypt data with this key and uh, send it to whoever to decrypt using the private key. Um, if, by the way, if any questions, yeah, just uh, just yell. Uh, okay, now another terminology, authenticator. Uh, it's basically a device to generate those private public keys. Okay, a device, a hardware device, usually. Um, and there are two types of authenticators. First of them is a uh, it's called platform authenticator. Is a hardware built in into the like smartphone or laptop, right into the device you're running the browser in. And there is a roaming authenticators. This is a, a, a device which like uh, is not part of the computer, like a thumb drive, Bluetooth, and whatever, uh, NFC tag, something like this. I'm, I'm not familiar with those. So we will be talking about platform authenticators. And there you go, that's the actual new API. This is all you need to learn. So create, uh, this is how you grab a public key from mobile phone. Then you go and store this public key to your database. Ah, yeah, yeah. So when, it, when you generate this, it pops up the user, um, like a window saying, hey, please put your finger on the, your fingerprint scanner. User puts it and then it generates you the public key you store it to your database. And then, if you need to verify that this is actually that user, you call this thing um, and pass it the public key from, from this thing. That's it. That's, uh, that's all you need to know to use the fingerprint scanner. There are other types of authenticators, and, and you can bring even more security with like different encryption, but actually this is two functions, but there is a lot of parameters to it. Um, this is from Google's website, and they see uh, this feature as uh, the replacement for two-factor auth. So you don't need to receive a bloody SMS anymore, or Authy, or Google Authenticator. You just use your phone. Or if you have a fancy laptop, you can use the fingerprint on your laptop. This is what I'm actually going to be showing you today. Um, re re authenticate re authorization. Sorry, uh, it's uh, it's what you know, if you have a banking app in your own smartphone, then you have a, a login based on your fingerprint. Okay. Anybody else is having an app which you open, and then to open it, actually, you need to put your finger on the scanner. I have like two apps like that. Anybody else actually using that kind of apps? Okay, it's about roughly half of the people. Even more. There are just plain people. So, um, and this is actually what you can use to re, re reauthorize your guys, your users, uh, if you want. You, you probably can store this public key in the local storage of your browser or something. I'm not sure. I'm, a, I'm not a security expert. Uh, low friction and phishing resistant two factor without password. I'm not sure why Google wrote it. This is not secure at all, but that's, uh, yeah, I copy pasted it. All right, here's a real world example for developers. Okay, anybody in this room who do not understand this language? Okay, everybody is a good. There was once uh, a. Well, okay, that's English, yeah. Do you speak it? Not necessarily in this. This sorry. It's all right. Um, so, let me go quickly through all that stuff. Create, and you must pass an object which have only one key called public key. And then you're kind of creating the public key. Then you say what kind of authenticators you are allowing. So this means platform, meaning the biometrics built in into your device, like fingerprint scanner, maybe 
Apple face ID, maybe if they even ever do it. Uh, I don't know what this is for. I copy pasted it. I don't know if it works with it or not. I, uh, I forgot to Google. User verification required. This is an important one. In some cases, um, the browser might not really ask you to put the finger because it, it might cache something or what. Basically, it will force to show user the please tap your finger uh, window. Now, this challenge is completely optional and being ignored by all the browsers right now. <laughs> but in the future, you can send something from the server to improve, to even more improve your security. I don't know yet how this works. Um, I actually was reading a uh, documentation about it. It's just hard. S -s Web standards are hard to read. Now, RP. Anybody can tell me what is RP? Amazing API, I know, super API. RP is relying party. This is what I told you just before. Basically, you see document.domain, this is your domain name of your website. Basically, your website. And the name of the company just to show on your. Um, now, this is important. This ID is, uh, you can pass anything, obviously, but I decided, well, it's called user.id, so I am passing them my user ID from my uh, system. And then name and display name, I'm not sure what they use for. Uh, documentation said you have to pass it. And then type of uh, encryption algorithm you want, and you can list a bunch of them, like 10, but this one is a working content Chrome, so I'm using it. As an example, but in, on the internet you will find that people pass like tens of those. Now, the most important bit, it returns the credential. It's a special class um, uh, and it's got a bunch of properties and methods. So, um, as you can see, I, I, I log the credential and this is how it looks. Um, everything is uh, rubbish except this ID. And it's the same ID, just uh, as an array buffer. So that's the ID, that's the public key you need to grab. Um, the one uh, which you probably need to store in the database against your user. Um, this, I think this one contains uh, the user information you supplied. Uh, at least you can grab the user ID from it. Then I'm for sure. I'm sure you can. Well, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, that's it. Then this is it. All, all the demos will be in the end of the talk. Yeah, that, that's the public key. Store ID on the server, as I told you already twice. It's the third time. Now, very fine. So, this is your ID. This is the public key you pass. This is also a challenge which is ignored. Uh, that is important. This is your reliant party ID, which is your website. And then force to show the, like confirm yourself. So this is will just confirm that the, that's the right user, which previously uh, set up the thing. Uh, and then it resolves into the exactly the same object as called credential. Yeah. This thing. Um, and then uh, they recommend to call this after you log out uh, to prevent automatic sign-ins uh, if you want that or not. But yeah, this prevents it. Demo. Not here. Yeah. All right, um, just imagine this is a PWA. Okay, I need to log in first. Uh, uh, it's in development, that's why it doesn't work properly at times. So, this is your kind of application. But you go to your like account settings, and you, I, I put it up yesterday, so don't, don't bother the UI. And you want to enable the two-factor auth. 
So you kind of do the switch in the box, and they, they, this, this is how it looks. I'm going to put my finger into my uh, laptop fingerprint scanner. Boom. There you go. Now I have it enabled. You probably recognize this thing. You, you just saw it. This is it. Uh, the credentials object. Now, uh, I'm going to log out and log in again and see how it works. And boom, it now asks me to put my finger in order. Okay, this is me, I'm putting my finger. Boom, I was signed in. There it is. Um, yeah, that, that's the same object like identical. Um, now, I'm developing uh, a secure application which you can see right now. It, it looks amazing. We need maximum security and maximum, uh, we have people trying to, well, submit not their own documents when they're trying to transact overseas. We have to report such cases. So we are, we are seeing people who are trying to be, um, well, I don't know, money laundering, I don't know what they do. They're trying to cheat. So uh, what they're thinking to do, maybe we'll come up with the next solution. So at some point of time, maybe when they're signing in, uh, we will do like this. We will show them their face. And we'll ask them, please uh, look at your selfie camera and put your finger on your fingerprint scanner. And this is what I'm going to do. There it is me. Uh, so now I have simultaneously catched both user's actual face and user's fingerprint. Uh, and then I obviously I'm going to send it immediately to the server, store it securely, and then whenever I need to validate who actually this person is and I'm going to use this data. And this is harder to, um, to trick. Um, I wanted to show you how to unpack the user ID. Um, for some reason I don't see how it Oh well. Uh, so this is the code. The code exactly as you saw it before. Um, and uh, where is the most? The, this is the function, and this is the credential dot response, which will uh, actually unpack and will grab the user ID from this credential object. I'm not sure why it's not showing in my in here. Demo. Uh, demos never go well. Uh, this is, this is uh, I think, all I wanted to tell you. Yeah, uh, feel free to ask questions. I will answer as I can, but I'm not, not a security expert. Thank you. Uh, I have more question what your application like. You will record the face, but are you do some matches like some face recognition or just to yeah. back up for security layer? Uh, we, we also ask, ask users to provide uh, their license, driver's license or passport uh, with the photo on it, and then we just match visually. Eventually, maybe with some automation, but for now, we just compare them visually and just making sure that. The document, we've seen it quite a few times. They upload documents of not themselves. Yeah. Um, so the public key that we saw, would it be different in the different app for the same person? What stops another app to, you know, to use your, the same ID, the same reliable party ID? Yeah. Can either put your domain there and pretend they're your. No? I tried putting other domains, uh, it throws it exceptions. Uh, but without any explanation, there's no message, just empty exception. 
Maybe it will improve. I've got two phones. If I try to go and you have the two phones, will it something there? Will it work? No, two different keys. Two different hardware devices. So you won't be able to set it by its name? Yeah. You could create that on the Yeah, yeah. Uh, it actually works exactly the same as in um, native apps. All right. Um, I actually have is, something else is to say. Any, is there any um, API access to? Because underlying it, there's a, a, an encryption store, probably probably um, uh, it, uh, There must be limits on how many different IDs apps can create. I have no idea. Sorry. I, I well, while I was playing with it, I, I created like hundreds of them. Nothing. Just it works. Um, I have a few actually things to share with you as, as news. I, I forgot to tell it in the, in the beginning of um, my talk. These are actually PWA news from, uh, from the last four months. I collected them uh, and will, it will take me just five minutes. So, Samsung, a browser, uh, Samsung Internet is called. Uh, they are, the developers are very PWA involved, uh, and they are telling uh, that they're going to implement all the PWA features uh, in, into the browser. And Samsung browser is getting uh, more oh, what? Traffic. traffic, yes, whatever, uh, usage. <laughs> um, WordPress embedding or already embedded the PWA capabilities into the WordPress core. Um, there is some incredible stats from Pinterest, the social network. Uh, after they ship the um, the new web app with the uh, PWA on on it, weekly active users on mobile have increased 103 percent year over year. On the engage engagement side, session length increased by 300 percent. The number of pins increased by 400%. The people were 300% more likely to save pin to a board. Logins on the web uh, up increased by 370%. And signups increased by 843%. Pinterest. Uh, August 2018, big three browsers all will adopt authentication API. And it looks like Safari is catching up, and as always, because it's the new IE. Uh, statistics. Startups currently are developing their first product as PWA, and then consider native apps. So that's what modern startups are doing. Uh, create React app, the, the well-known package. Uh, now creates PWA by default. WebAssembly is getting better with threads and uh, low-level uh, assembler instructions. Notification Badge API for PWA landed in Chrome and Edge, or, or already landed. Uh, basically, through push notifications, maybe we will hear about that in the next talk, maybe not. Basically, your shortcut to your PWA on your phone will have the, the red patch of uh, unopened notifications. And this will be a website, not an app. Uh, there are modules which uh, can store your entire Redux, MobX, or VOX, or whatever X, store right to the index DB or local storage. And then you, like, uh, it's using, you can use the Redux as uh, your database, and uh, the app can work offline. Uh, there are modules like this just for offline apps. Um, statistics. Desktop and ta tablet browsing decreased in the last three years. Uh, mobile browsing grow, grew by, I think, 40%, and those two dropped by 50%. Ah, oh, but there are there, there numbers. In the last two years, people launched native apps on tablets 50% fewer times. 
people launch native apps less and less. Uh, ah, that on, ta on tablets, but on mobiles, 20% less. Uh, according to Stats Counter, if you know uh, this website, uh, 70 from 70 to 75 percent of all devices in the world uh, can now install PWA into your home screen or launcher or desktop, whatever it's called on your application, or on your operating system. Even LockOS now have it through Chrome. Um, there is a web standard proposal to allow PWAs to handle file shares. So basically you can share a file from a native app to a PWA. You cannot do it yet and I, I think it will land in all browsers, maybe in a couple of years, but this is what's coming. And this is it. Thank you for listening.